and it has grown to what it is today. It's solid, it's stable, and uh, the people are <coughs> growing, and we add new folks from time to time, and that's a good thing. We've been through a lot of folks. I think so many people have been through all we've been through. a lot of people. Over 100. Over 100 that have come in here to see for a while and then to go for various reasons. Uh, and I would like to be able to have the ability to make people to come to church. I think their life would be much more enriched if they did. But I can't make people. I can't force them to come. What can you and so we put them in the Lord's hands and Amen. pray for them. Amen. Amen. And it just seems that many obstacles <coughs> uh, try to keep people away from hearing the word. Well, I know the reason, and you probably know the reason because you're here. And the reason is that if you hear this word, faith will come and you'll be delivered. You'll be free from the problems that you face. But if for some reason the enemy can divert you and make you think, I need to stay home today, you miss what the Holy Spirit is saying to the body of Christ, which is probably for you because since you're a part of this body, and therefore you stay in some sort of bondage. And it grieves my heart to see that happen, but it does happen, it is happening, and um, I don't want to be a controlling type pastor and call you every five minutes and say, why aren't you here? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just not that way. Although my heart is with people that are not making it. And sometimes I do mention a small word of correction to try to boost them and to check out what they're doing. Uh, but it's never in condemnation and it's never in... Uh, being upset, it is in love mm -hmm. that because I want you to get all that God has to offer. Mm -hmm. He's got a full buffet for us. Forget the buffet after church. He's got a buffet right here. Oh, yeah. and, uh, we need to come and partake. Right. We wouldn't think about missing them too many meals, would we? I mean, physical meals. Mm -hmm. But yet we just flippantly miss the meal at church quite often for various reasons. Now, I know you work. I work too. And I know it's sometimes difficult. And I know some of you drive a long way to get here. And I'm very thankful that you choose to come the times that you do. And uh, that's most, uh, when I was in the early days of preaching, I used to preach to the empty chairs instead of to the people God brought me. I was preaching at the ones who didn't make it. And uh, that's, a, that's a grave error because God has brought many people here to hear, even if it's only one or two, still, whom the Lord has brought in, and uh, we give them all we got. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this is the body of Christ. It is a local body of Christ. It is one part of the body of Christ. And uh, if God has called you here to be a part of this body, we are thankful for that. We don't want to put any pressure on you. Um, but we are we do want you to know we're extremely thankful <coughs> if you call this your home. If you're just visiting with us, we love you also and appreciate the fact that you would come and check us out. And uh, we're not trying to take people from other churches. We don't want transplants. We want converts. Right. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're thankful for, for all that he's doing all over, mm -hmm. not just here. There are many good churches. And uh, new ones popping up. Some make it, some don't. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, my family got off safely the other day, and they're home, most likely watching on the internet right now. And uh, I miss my family. It was wonderful to have them with me for a short time. It's very rare that my dad would come and spend a week with me. He's, he's like me, I guess I'm like him. He came first. Yeah. Uh, I'm a homebody, you know. I don't mind being away for a few days, but then I'm ready to sleep in my own bed and have my own home. And well, he's the same way. He doesn't usually stay much more than two, three days with me, but he stayed a whole week. It's a record. Hallelujah. Yeah, it was great. And uh, I spoke to him this morning. They're doing good, and all is well there. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We've been talking about preparation for the days to come. And uh, again, we're going to continue in that last. Uh, maybe next week would be my final yeah. review. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. But uh, <laughs> this is also, I know, how to stay out of trouble in troubled times. Because I continue to see in the world system uh, people that are hurting, people that are getting themselves in more deeper trouble. And it grieves my heart because there are answers. I further see though that many people that are in those situations refuse to look to the answer and they choose many other ways. And the Lord said himself, take heed what you hear. Because according to the measure you measure it, it's going to come back to you. In other words, the importance you put is not my message ever. The importance that you put on what you hear, what you watch, what you listen to, what you think on, then that's what you're going to read back. That's what's going to come back. So if John Doe's opinion is really heavy weighty to you, I mean it's important to you, then it may change the way you behave. But the one that needs to be the weightiest or the heaviest to you, not in terms of being a burden, but uh, the strongest in importance, must be the Word of God. It must be the Word of God. There is no option to this. And uh, so the answers are all right here in the book. From Genesis to Revelation, they're here. If you really believe that, then you'll research it until you find it. Amen. And then you'll lay hold of it until it's working in your life. The problem is, is that we live in a comfortable society where technology has far surpassed most people's imagination. And so we're very comfortable in that there's a pill for everything and there is uh, a scientific reason for everything supposedly and so we tend to follow that route because these people have researched they established they've written books textbooks in school and they teach us these things and we take it to be gospel truth when much of it is theory much of it is experimentation a doctor calls his work a practice because he's still practicing <laughs> if you read some of the books on the early medicine, it's scary what they did to people because they didn't know any better. Yep. Especially if the one. It's, it's just amazing, man. And, and, you know, it's come a long way. Thank God for it. Listen, I am for good medicine. And thank God for good Christian doctors like Dr. Pecorero and their medical skills. Um, we need these kind of things. But there is a level you can get to where you don't have to have that anymore. Amen. Amen. That can be for the people just beginning this or the people that are lost. But you as a Christian are immune. The scriptures say you're immune. Oh, yeah. But if you don't think you're if you don't believe you're immune, then you get sick. Hallelujah. Sounds kind of cut and dry, doesn't it? It really is. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, Pastor. So, I want you to turn with me to Hebrews. Now, I still have a gun, but I'm about to. I'm just, I'm not on the clock yet. Let's put it that way. When the Duke gives me signals back there, when my time is up, I have to stop. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 5. That's where we're going to start today. Now, I shared some of this message at the Brazilian church a few weeks ago. So those of you who were there are going to get some recap. However, I was in the preaching mode at the Brazilian church, and I'm in the teaching mode this morning. So Come on, preach. We'll be somewhat different. 
praise God. Unless I get to preach, I'll let this, you know, just the end. Yeah, bring it on. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 5. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. we love you. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word. Yes. We appreciate the fact that your Holy Spirit is our teacher, our yes. God. Yes, sir. And we thank you, Father, that because of this, we have revelation knowledge yes. in your word yes. and by your word yes. so that we might learn who we are in you, that we might know you, Lord. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that. You. So, Lord, open our eyes to see, our ears to hear this morning that what you're saying to us by the Holy Ghost, and we're eager and hungry to receive in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm going to begin with verse 11. Now I have a 26 translation Bible. And so it is uh, more lengthy to read these few verses than just out of the King James or New King James or whatever. But I think it's important in this case that we break it down a little bit more. Uh, so bear with me as I read. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 says, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered. Now, it breaks it in little sentences here, and so uh, another translation says, uh, It's difficult to make it clear to you. Or, hard to be uttered would say hard to be explained. This is just other translations, not my interpretation, other translations. Okay? So he's saying here, I have many things to say, but it's difficult to make it clear to you. The reason it's difficult to make it clear to you is because uh, you come to the Lord full of unbelief and religious thinking. Not Maybe you not even darken a church door. But because you hear in this society, so much religious talk that it clutters up your thinking process. Hallelujah. And so, then it goes on to say, seeing you're dull of hearing. Well, William says, since you have become so dull in your spiritual senses, fill up so slow to grasp spiritual truth, and another translator, sluggish in spiritual understanding. Now, Seeing you're dull of hearing, that word dull is nothros in the Greek. I don't know if I'm saying it right. N O T H R O S. And it means slothful. Yep. So it means that you have uh, been become lazy in exercising yourself on yep. spiritual things. Yep. Um, dull of hearing. In other words, you're not exercising or like exercise, physical exercise yourself in a spiritual direction. So it's caused you not to be able to hear properly from the Spirit. You're still hearing carnal things. See, when, please remember, when you come to the Lord, then you are a lost carnal person. We all were. Yeah. No condemnation. We all were. We get saved, a new realm opens up. The spirit realm. We used to say there was no God, now we say, I see God. Yes, He's there. Okay, our spiritual eyes were open. Okay, but you can't stop there. Just having spiritual eyes open because you're still, if you don't exercise your spirit, then the carnal will still prevail. Your three parts. Your first the spirit, that's the eternal part of you. You possess a soul, that's your mind, will, and emotions, and they live in a body here on planet Earth. All have voices, by the way. Your spirit has a voice, your soul has a voice, and your body has a voice. Get your finger with a hammer and see if you don't hear your voice in your body. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay, so... We are now, as Christian people, not to be slothful in exercising ourselves unto spiritual things so that the result, the end result, is that we be able to hear what God is saying spiritually, not be drowned out by the earthly clutter. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah, right now. All right. Hold on. Verse 12. Mm -hmm. For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, he's obviously speaking to Christians here, 
You have need that one teach you again. Yeah. William says you actually need someone to teach you over and over again. Well, I have to admit that I can hear a CD by Brother Copeland and enjoy it immensely, get revelation from it, pop it in and play it again, and get something else again. This is living word. And sometimes I have to hear it over and over before the light goes on because of my lightning fast brain. <laughs> the first time I heard God healed, I didn't accept and believe and receive and walk in divine health. I had every excuse imaginable why he didn't want to heal me. He might heal you, but I don't think he's going to heal me. Well, this comes from exercise in spiritual, the word, principles. Hallelujah. So it's not wrong to hear it over and over again. Sometimes we need that. But there is a point that you need to move on to. Okay, so you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Moffat says the rudimentary principles of the divine revelation. Talking about the Word of God. The very elements, William says, of the truths that God has given us. About the first simple rules of God's revelation is another translation. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Okay? So, in other words, they're still babies. They need milk, uh, not, a, not something they have to chew on. And I can tell you today that there are passages in the Scripture that I still wrestle with. I don't mean in unbelief. I mean in getting a full understanding. The entire book of Revelation is one of them. And I'm not ashamed to tell you that it, I'm, I have my mind so filled with everybody's pie chart that has everything worked out by their head knowledge that I can't hear what the Spirit is saying properly. And I've studied it. I've even taught some of it. And I've got a pretty good grip on it. But yet there's so much still there that I need the Holy Spirit to open to me. So what do I do to get that? I read it over and over and over until the light comes on inside. Right. Hallelujah. I don't read it in unbelief. I don't read it to argue with it. I don't read it to dispute it. I don't read it to uh, try to prove a point that I thought it might mean. I read it with an open heart that God can turn the light on. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Amen. So, everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Now that's what I want to talk to you about. That's really the theme of today's message is that we need to be skillful in the word of God. There is a group of people, Christians, that are skillful with God's word, meaning they get results, Bible results. They walk in divine health. They walk in prosperity. They walk in love. They walk in forgiveness. They do these things because they've learned to, to train themselves to be skillful. All right? So, that word unskillful there, I'm not even going to try to say it. I'm going to do it. Apieros. It means inexperienced. It's another word for inexperienced of which some of these translators translated it. The American Standard Version says, is without experience. There it is. Without experience of the word of righteousness. Okay? Uh, another translator says, is inexperienced in the doctrine of being righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. William says, is inexperienced in the message of right doing. See, God has a right way. There's a wrong way and there's a right way. It's a, that's just another way of looking at righteousness. Rightness is God's view of right. And God is always right. Hello? Amen. Now, there's no arguing with Him. Uh, New, New English Bible says they does not know what is right. Now, that's probably the simplest of all of them. It's unskillful in the word of righteousness or just does not know what's right according to God's viewpoint. 
All right. So today we want to study how to know what is right in a skillful fashion, meaning that we can use it for our benefit, for our victory, so that when the devil knocks at the door, we are skilled enough to recognize him, number one, and number two, know how to use the word to put him to flight. Hallelujah. You see... This is not just a church club that we come to here right. just to rub elbows and exchange right. ideas. This is life. Mm -hmm. This is important. It's the most important thing you can do is to hear the Word of God and exercise yourself unto God that is with it. That's why it's so important where or who you listen to in teaching. Because if you listen to those who do away with the truth that we try to propagate that is faith truths then what it does is create uh, doubt and it creates a, uh, uh, questions in your mind and it causes you to uh, to lose ground victory wise you can't afford that I, I turn it off if it's something on the radio TV even a CD somebody gives me or DVD or whatever and if it's not preaching faith then I hit the button. Right, With my prerogative, I can hit the button and turn them off. Right, and I'm going to tell you, most of what's being taught today in most Christian circles is everything. It sounds very religious, but it's all about how God is going to do something right. for you. Right. Not much is taught about how you can get it now. Walk in. But it sounds so slick. I mean, it really... You see, I was raised... Holy Ghost Charismatic, and uh, most of the Holy Ghost Charismatic churches, they love God, they speak in tongues, they pray for the sick, they do all these things, and they get hit and miss results. The reason is, they don't teach how they can walk in it now. Right, right now. It's ours now. Instead, I'm always after it. I'm always pursuing it, trying to get it. Well, if I'm going to be skillful in this, I've got to take what is mine and exercise myself in it. Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right, so... It says here, he's un, it's unskillful. Everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he's a babe. Verse 14, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age, full grown. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now that's real key. Okay? The word senses there is... Asetheria. Yeah. You look it up in the Bible. And it means organs of sense. That would be like your five physical senses. Okay? Have their uh, senses exercised. That word exercise means trained. Okay? Now let's read a couple other translations. It says, uh, To them who by reason of habit have their organs of perception well trained. Mm -hmm. You don't come into church as a habit. I can't imagine doing anything else on Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday, or Sunday. I mean, it's just a habit. My car, I get in to turn it on, and I can go to sleep, and it drives here. <laughs> I mean, it's just habit. Those whose faculties have been trained by practice. You see, the, the most of the thought today is, Okay, God, here I am. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Now zap me. Go ahead, Lord. I'm waiting. Zap me. Well, Lord, where are you? You know I have pain in my body. Zap me. That's most of the teaching. Hallelujah. Well, you're going to have to exercise what you know is yours right now and take the promised land by faith, you're going to have to go drive out the, the, all the ice, the mice. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right, another translation says, those whose faculties have been trained by practice. Another one says, William says, who on account of constant use. Listen to that now. This is Bible. It's not my opinion. It's Bible. It's just another translation. 
Those who on account of constant use have their faculties trained. Well, here's what happens with most Christians. They're accustomed to doing worldly things, and so they never change over, and their constant use is in constant worldliness. Right, right. Then they wonder why things aren't happening. Say so, say so. All right, now. We need it. We need it. Thank you. I got a couple of you stirred up in your mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Another translation says, whose senses are habitually in training. Habitually in training. My senses must be human. Let me tell you, for 25 years, my eyes told my brain everything it knew. My ears the same. My sense of feeling, taste, touch, smell. Those trained this brain. I didn't know there was a God. I didn't know there was a spiritual realm. And so I was trained well in the world system. Then I got saved. And something inside of here began to say, oh, there's another way. And my brain argued. But my eyes are telling me this. My feelings are telling me this. They still argue. But if I habitually train them to submit to the Word, eventually I reach a point of maturity and they lose. Hallelujah. Now, are, are my five physical senses bad? Yeah, no. They're just not my Lord anymore. They're not my God. But I need them. I need to see. It's hard to drive blind. I need to hear. It's hard to pay attention if I can't hear. See what I'm saying? I need those things. I just need to train them to be in submission to the Word. Right. 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 And now, Philip says, that is for the man who has developed by experience his power. Like that. That's Holy Ghost power in you. That's the authority God has granted you through Jesus Christ. You see, listen now. Philip says, that is for the man who has developed by experience his power. That's due to supernatural power. Power from on how heavenly power is yours today. If you'll get hold of it. Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say to discern both good and evil. In other words, to distinguish right from wrong is another translator. To distinguish right from wrong. God's right, wrong being the world's way of doing things. Are you with me? Yeah. The point is, you must you and I must become skillful in the word. If we're going to become skillful at anything, saints, anything, think about it. What do you got to do? You got to practice it, right? You got to use it until it produces the desired result. Even once.